Hey guys, welcome back to Chickadee Farm. I'm heading out to the garden here. It's uh, fairly early for me to be getting started on projects. So still drinking my coffee, but I um, wanted to get out here this morning because I did not come out yesterday. I had a bunch of stuff going on and wasn't able to get out here. So need to rescue tomatoes before they get eaten by mice. But today we are going to actually spend most of it in the kitchen doing tomato preserving, finally, which is exciting. I don't have any more room in my freezer to keep putting tomatoes. Um, and I think I've got a good, probably 35 or 40 pounds. So I should be able to get through, I wanna make three sauces. I wanna do a um, marinara, a pizza sauce, and an enchilada sauce. So I think that I'll have plenty of tomatoes to get those three done. So I will gather up some uh, tomatoes and uh, say hi to the girls. Little Miss Liberty Gibbet up here decided she wanted to have a closer hello. Hi, lady. <laughs> She's so cute. Love her. I've been meaning to get the girls a refill on their grits and oyster shells. So let me get those in there for them. So basically, I just do a little round of the garden and check all the beds, see if there's anything that needs to be harvested. Um, I pretty much bring in a small basket of stuff every day, which is fun. And then I go around to all of my tomatoes and grab anyone that is even showing the slightest signs of blushing um, to get them away from mice. <laughs> so that's the most important part, but I will still take a quick walk around the beds as well. I don't know if you can tell, but you can see how much I have to dig in these plants to find the tomatoes. But pretty good haul, and even some that are almost completely ripe. So that's great. All right. Um, so as I was walking around, I was like, you know what? I have a couple things I, got, I just got to show you, and then we'll go in. All right. First thing I want to show you. I was pretty sure I was not going to get any zucchini, but I have zucchinis. There's another one back there. There's some on this guy and oh, one down there. So that's very exciting. These are actually the zucchini that I planted. Um, when did I plant them? Like late, it's, I, I don't know, end of July, I think. Yeah, end of July. Um, and the pumpkins that I planted, they actually are producing pumpkins, but I'm sure I, they won't actually come to maturity. There's one in there too, because we are fast approaching our frost date. Um, okay, what was the other thing I wanted to show you is, oh, actually, no, sorry. <laughs> okay, sorry, you're probably getting dizzy. I wanted to show you my basil and parsley absolutely need to get cut again. Look at this. And whatever was eating them has apparently finally stopped. So I am going to have to come out here. I just, I can't, I can't not. I can't not pick them. It's all here. I can freeze dry it and it'll last forever. So might as well. I might not have a great year next year for parsley and basil. And then my dahlias. Holy moly, aren't they beautiful? But the one I gotta show you, well, this guy, look at how big that is. I didn't think I got dinner plate dahlias, but 
this practically looks like one. And these beauties, oh, they're just so pretty. I have a couple that still haven't blossomed yet, but that's okay, because I'm getting lots from the others. But look, 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 look at that gorgeous flower. I just love it. All right, I think I only have one more thing to show you. And that is actual real pumpkins. This is my Cinderella pumpkin, and I've got two that I think will make it to maturity. So I'm very, very excited about that. It's also trying to produce new ones. Oh, and actually there's a little one right there. Probably also won't make it, but, and then I have one baby boo that is turning color and he is also trying to give me a couple more, but we shall see. I mean, maybe we get lucky and don't have a bad frost until the end of September, which would be great, but it's supposed to be September 15th and this is is today the 14th? No, today's the 13th. So, but it, nowhere in the forecast is it showing a frost um, in the 10 day forecast, not even getting into the 30s yet. So, fingers crossed. All right, let's go in. I'm gonna stop in the greenhouse really quick and just check and make sure there's nothing there. Um, and then we'll go in and get started on tomatoes. Hey guys. All right, we are in the kitchen with tomatoes. Uh, you saw this morning, I actually put um, a bunch in the crock pot there to cook down, um, start cooking down. Um, they, those were all frozen in the freezer as well. And then as I was reading the recipe that I wanna use, which is a roasted tomato um, marinara sauce, I realized I actually need fresh tomatoes for that because you're supposed to cut them in half and roast them in the oven before you make the sauce. Or before you, yeah, before you make the sauce. So I decided I only have about 10 pounds. So here, let me show you. Um, I only have about 10 pounds of fresh tomatoes here. Uh, they're ripe and, but I'm sure this is, these at least are 10 pounds. So I think what I'm gonna do is just um, put the frozen ones on the trays as well and so you know the bottom half of them won't get roasty but you peel the skins off anyway so um, I'm not I think it'll have the same effect and it won't affect the safety this is a safe tested recipe um, so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna make sure that I have uh, 10 pounds of these frozen guys as well and then we will get them onto cookie sheets and into the oven speaking of I need to turn the oven on. So this is, uh, recipe is coming from the ballmasonjars.com website. And, oh, sorry, no, 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 that's the wrong one. It is coming from healthycanning.com website and it is called the roasted marinara sauce. All right, 400 degrees. All right, while they're preheating, I will start getting these guys onto sheet pans. These guys need to get washed and cut in half. Okay, we're at nine. 9 pounds, 13 ounces, so I'll just add a couple more of these, and we should get there pretty easily. 9 pounds, 15 ounces. 10 pounds. All right, and these guys I'm just going to add to the ones that are already in the crock pot. So these were all washed before I put them in the freezer. I'm probably going to actually put these in the oven right now while it's um, preheating so that it can start thawing them because it's going to take longer with these guys that are all frozen.
may have noticed I have um, some KT tape on my hand. I injured it somehow back, way back in February and finally went to see an actual specialist for it after I did PT and all that kind of stuff. And uh, they gave me a cortisone shot right into this knuckle. And it's very painful today. <laughs> so the KT, help, KT tape helps at least stabilize it a little bit, but I don't want to get it wet. So I'm going to be wearing gloves or a glove. Um, and just in case you're concerned that I'm wasting all of the, or going to be throwing out all of these Ziploc bags, we reuse our Ziploc bags pretty much until they're, they're leaking. They've gotten a hole and they're starting to leak. So no worries. These will get reused. usually use a uh, cutting board when I'm doing tomatoes but um, it's it just keeps it's a little easier to clean up using a cutting board because you can just pick it up and dump the seeds and stuff that come out so like I said just cutting these guys in half Somehow found a cat hair in between washing it and putting it on here. <laughs> Very common in our house. That's that second tray done. So I'll get that one in here. I am mostly using um, paste tomatoes. I'm pretty sure these are just aroma, uh, but I do have a few um, slicing tomatoes. So these, can't tell really well, they're a beautiful golden color, but um, they're not all that flavorful. So I, I'm just gonna use them. And they actually are fairly meaty. So I'm just gonna use them. We should be able to get everything on this last tray. Paul Robeson is actually fairly meaty as well. And this actually says, specifically says, that you don't have to core or seed them. So, because we're gonna put it through a food mill. It does tell you after you take them out of the oven to let them cool until you can slip the skins off. Then it has you putting them through a food mill. So I haven't decided yet if I'm going to try and peel the skins off or not. Goodness gracious. I'm very proud of the fact that these are all tomatoes from my garden. Next tray and all right, all done. Getting those sliced up. We will just set them to the side for right now and do a couple of other projects. All right, we do have a couple other projects that I wanna get done. Actually, we're gonna stay here because we're gonna need the sink. Um, we need to fill our hummingbird feeders, so I'm just gonna make a really quick mixture for them. I'm sure most of you have seen in the stores the uh, um, hummingbird nectar that you can buy, the red stuff, but the red dye really isn't good. Let me heat up that water. Let me finish explaining. 
the red dye that is in that nectar is not good for them and uh, doesn't really attract them, so there's no reason to have it in there. So we just make our own. It's just an easy uh, mixture of two parts water to one part sugar. It's very sticky <laughs> and sweet, uh, but they love it. And yeah, so really simple. I just mix it up. I use hot water, put the sugar in, get it all dissolved, and that's it. It's super easy. just set these guys also aside and David can hang them up later today. You might recognize this uh, yesterday, last night, we finished up doing our applesauce and apple cider. I need a pair of scissors. So my plan is that I'm going to um, get them all labeled, get them in the boxes so that they and take the rings off, make sure everything's sealed and uh, so they can go downstairs and get put away in the pantry. So I used to always label my jars on the, the lid, but David actually pointed out, it's really hard to see them when they're on the shelves that way. So he has started, he got a little label maker and he, makes me labels and they can go on the side. It's much easier to see, especially because my pantry is a little dark. It's a bit time consuming to do this, but it's all right. Um, I put them up at the top of the jar because um, I do have a little lip on my pantry shelves um, for earthquake protection. I don't think we get a ton of earthquakes here, but we actually are very close to Yellowstone, which has some major fault lines and such volcano, volcanic activity. So I imagine they do get earthquakes here. And I've just always lived places that had earthquakes, so it's just kind of what I do these days. update too on the apple cider. I am going to shake this um, probably a couple times every day because there is still foam at the top and I don't want it to start getting moldy. So I'll just give it a shake a couple times a day. Tighten the ring of course until it is started doing its ferments. While the tomatoes continue to cook down. As you can see, they are incredibly watery. And I've been told, although I've not seen this like said in any of the, you know, the ball canning books and the, the tested recipes, that you should not remove the water that the tomatoes produce, that you need to let it actually cook down with it. Because maybe supposedly there's like a lot of their acid is in that juice. So you want the acid to stay in there, but the water can evaporate. Um, but I also know of several other homesteaders channels, YouTube channels that um, when it's looking like this and it's really easy, you know, you can just dip a spoon in and, or even a, like a measuring cup and you could get out a lot of this liquid and it would make things much faster. I'm undecided. <laughs> 
if I want to do that or not. Um, like I said, it's not actually said anywhere. I'm just seeing that on my safe canning Facebook page. And some of them are pretty fanatical, like hardcore fanatical about following the rules. Um, anyway, I think I probably am going to because it's going to take forever to cook down like this. So that's, that's this one. And then the ones that we have in this pot doing the same thing. And these are the guys in the oven. They're doing good. They probably have another mm, 10, 15 minutes or so until they are kind of getting charred on the top, which is what we want. So in the meantime, we are going to make chipotles in adobo. This is not a tested recipe. Um, I'm basing it fairly closely off of a couple of recipes in the ball book and on the Healthy Canning um, website, but it is not a tested recipe. Anyway, I actually found red jalapenos because my jalapenos, I, yeah, they're about this big. <laughs> so that wasn't gonna work. So, but I actually found red jalapenos at the store the other day, which I was shocked. Um, they aren't organic or anything, but I've wanted to try making my own chipotles in adobo. So David smoked them for me a couple days ago and they're in the fridge waiting to get canned up. So I found a recipe, a couple recipes for adobo that, um, like I said, they, they're really close to the like as, as acidity levels and the ingredients in them. Um, like peppers versus peppers, hot peppers versus sweet peppers. And like one of them has a bunch of onions in it and I'm not gonna be putting any onions in it, which is a definitely a low acid food. Oh well, as are the peppers. Um, so I'm, I feel pretty confident that it's gonna be fine. So that's our next project to get that done. I just took Madeline outside for a second and I just wanna show you, look at these beautiful chamomile flowers. I cut my chamomile that's in my green stock back pretty hard, not very long ago. Well, actually it's been, it's been several weeks now, but look at, they're like good sized flowers. The same is um, for the chamomile in my garden that I like sheared back. It is totally coming back with fairly sizable flowers, which is fun, even though I have more chamomile than I need for probably 10 years. <laughs> well, that's okay. Um, so I actually also took a little break for lunch. So the tomatoes, they're actually still in the oven and they're looking good. Let me show you. Um, they definitely are taking longer than they normally would because they were frozen. Well, the frozen ones that you can see. So like these were, these were the fresh. So they are nice and getting nice and charred up, but I don't know if you can tell, the liquid is like literally right up to the rim of the baking sheet. So I think I'm gonna have to get, I can promise you that if I tried to pull it out of the oven like it is right now, I would spill it everywhere and probably burn myself. So I need to get um, one of those turkey baster thingies with the little ball on the end and I'll just suck a bunch of that liquid out before I pull them out of the oven. bottom have not started getting nice and brown yet so I'm gonna leave these in there so that top heat can hit them for a little while and then I will get the liquid off of them Ooh, I'm red. Um, and put them on the top shelf and put one of the other trays in to start going it's definitely taking way longer than I expected no surprise so for the adobo sauce, we need a bunch of dried peppers to start out with. So we are going to use 
Pasilla Negro. Pasilla Negro. And these are just Pasilla. I'm not sure what the difference is. And then um, some ancho chilies as well. This recipe calls for guajillo peppers, but I don't have any of those. And I don't think that our like local store would have them. So I have enough peppers just to make up for the number that they wanted me to use of those. So I would just use those. But these need to get roasted first. So I'm just gonna turn on a pan, not putting any um, oil or anything, just a dry pan. And we need enough piece of paper. Let's see, we need 11 peppers total. Seven. Do the rest in the second batch. And then we're just going to put them in hot water to rehydrate after they have. Uh, basically, you just want to get them heated up enough that you can start to smell them. Um, and toasted, that's what we're, the word we're looking for. Hard to tell because obviously they are quite dark. So you just kind of more go by smell. So then um, I will take the uh, stems off and knock as many of the seeds out as I can uh, before I put them in hot water to rehydrate. And then the rest of the ingredients are uh, three cloves of garlic, two tablespoons of brown sugar, oregano, a teaspoon of oregano, a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of cumin, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of pepper, and half a teaspoon of allspice. And then one and a half cups of water. And this only calls for a half a cup of vinegar, but I think because um, the, the recipes that I saw in the ball book and on healthycanning.com, they call for more like three quarters to a cup of vinegar. Um, however, they also call for like, um, what was it? Six cups of tomatoes and two cups of onions, which I'm not doing. So, um, so I think I'm gonna go with more like, I'll go with two thirds of a cup of vinegar. That's what I would do. All right, I'm gonna get these toasted and a few more in hot water. In the meantime, while these guys are doing their thing, that was pretty quick, this part. Uh, but I will need that to, um, to cool a bit so I can get the tops and seeds off. So in the meantime, we will chop up, I'm gonna turn that off, the uh, smoked jalapenos. Like, what are these? Smoked jalapenos. They're beautiful and they are very smoky, which is lovely. So I'm just gonna chop these into slices, rings. Um, I know you oftentimes find chipotles whole in your chipotle and adobo, but honestly, you end up always chopping it anyway. So I'm just gonna chop it. And I am leaving all the seeds in. Actually, I think I might even chop it a little finer than this. These are really big jalapenos. Oh, you know what? I really need to take skin off all of these. Dang nabbit. All right, so now I'm going to painstakingly take the skin off all these rings. Dang it. <laughs> uh, that's all right. So actually take the skin off when they're whole. It'll be much easier. Make your life much, much easier. Move these guys back over here. Okay. Oh my gosh, you guys, I literally was just about ready to start chopping, slicing again. <laughs> Take the skins off. <laughs> hmm, not sure how much easier it actually will be. If anybody has a trick for 
peeling peppers easier. Goodness gracious. I know normally when you roast them, you put them in a bag or cover them with something to help loosen the skins. And we didn't really do that. And we actually let them cool on a rack. So that's probably our mistake. Note for next time. I just honestly, I wasn't even thinking about the fact that I would need to take the skins off. Um, I can get this little rinse and dry and then get these dried peppers seeded here. Pretty simple. Just pop the tops off and give them a little shake. Sometimes you have to break them open a little bit to get the seeds out. But it's fine because they're all going to get um, blended up. So it doesn't matter what shape they are in. I'm going to fill this bowl with some hot, hot water and let them soak for a bit. I have decided to leave the juice in. However, I would like to save the skins and not have that go through the um, food mill with the seeds and cores and stuff. Because I like, I freeze dried the last batch of skins. It makes a lovely powder, which I can pretty much use as, um, just rehydrate it to whatever consistency I want. So like tomato paste consistency. So I'm gonna try and gently pick off, should be pretty easy on most of these skins. And just put them to the side. Cause I don't want the seeds and cores in that powder is why I'm doing this. Um, I need something to put them in. The, ooh, it's hot. Tomatoes in the other pan on the stove have actually boiled down quite a bit now. So as soon as there is enough room in here, I will just add them to this. However, it is looking like it might be a good chunk of time before we are gonna be able to use these tomatoes. Ooh, hot, 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 hot. So I'm not sure that we will get to the recipe that calls for them which at the moment I can't even remember which recipe that is. Maybe the enchilada sauce? Yeah, it must be the enchilada sauce. I'm actually going to turn this off, let it cool down, run it through the food mill now, get all of the spices and garlic and other things that go in here in, and then let it cook down. That's my new plan. All right, our peppers for the adobo should be ready. I have a feeling this is going to be very, very spicy because these peppers, oh, I missed one, are the ones that are uh, causing me to cough every time I disturb them. So I'm going to take a deep breath away from them and get them all into the, uh, whatever this thing is, blender. I was going to use the liquid from this for the cup and a half of water, but I think I'm just gonna go with a cup and a half of water because I don't need to add more spice. Cup and a half of water. <clears throat> and two thirds cup of vinegar. Then we need on my herbs. 
We need a teaspoon of oregano. Teaspoon of cumin. Teaspoon of salt. And then a half a teaspoon of black pepper. A quarter a teaspoon of cinnamon. And a quarter teaspoon of allspice. Oh, and I forgot to mention that I do have three cloves of garlic in there as well. And then we just blend this. Oh wait, I need two tablespoons of brown sugar. get it blended up. I'm going to try not to inhale when I open this. Need to. Wish That is good. Holy cow. It's a little bit spicy, but not nearly as spicy as I thought it was going to be. Oh, that is yummy. All right, I am supposed to get this on the stove to get hot and I will throw the peppers in with it and then we will get them jarred up and get them canned. Actually, I think I am going to bring out my electric pressure canner and pressure can them just to like be totally, totally as safe as I can without using a tested recipe. I have the jalapenos in with the adobo. I did, it was pretty thick, so I did thin it out with another a uh, quarter cup of water and quarter cup of vinegar, white vinegar. And I think this is a better consistency for canning. Like I said, I did decide to go with pressure canning and the instructions in the recipe, so the recipe that I'm using comes from kevincooks.com, I believe. I'll have to double check it and I can link it below. Um, he gives canning instructions, but he's pretty wishy-washy about it being, I mean, he says it's safe, but I, I, yeah, anyway. Um, and he says you can water bath or pressure can, and it would only be for 15 minutes. Well, I'm going to err on the side of safety and I'm going to go with 25. So if you're water bath or if you're pressure canning, just peppers and water, so no acidification at all, it's, um, 35 minutes. Uh, so I feel like 25 minutes is a good compromise. However, I'm not going to cook the peppers very long in here since they are going to be cooked so long in the canner. So I'm just going to turn while well, it's on low for right now. This burner doesn't like to leave flames on when I turn it on low. I guess they're okay. And my jars are heating up right now in my canner over here. That guy right there. And as soon as they are heated up, we will get this stuff into jars. And in the meantime, uh, this, this is the second batch of tomatoes for the roasted tomato marinara. And I put the tomatoes that we're cooking down in here in with the others in the crock pot so that I can get these guys in this one. And it does say to pull the skins off, but since I'm putting it through a food, food mill, I'm not going to. 
I'm also not saving these skins because they do have that um, charring on them and I don't really want that flavor in my powder. And I did pour all of the liquid that I collected before I took them out of the oven, I did pour that in back in here. So we are cooking with all of the liquid. The ones in the oven are actually going a little bit faster because those were all fresh. So they should be done here. Well, the next pan should come out probably in 10 minutes. And then the other two I only put in a couple of minutes ago. So that'll probably be a little bit longer. All right, just wait for those jars to heat up. Jars are warmed up. This is ready to go, nice and hot. I need my funnel so I don't make a mess. As you can see, I am doing this in half pint jars. It's kind of, well, um, when they come in the cans, they're probably more like quarter pint jars. So what, four ounces? Yeah. But since you can reseal these, or like you can put the cap back on and um, put it in the fridge, unlike the canned ones, um, I think the eight ounces will be fine. All right, funnel, funnel, funnel. And I'm going to leave a, that was way more than a half inch. <laughs> half inch headspace, which is not this. I just added a little water to what was left in the pan so I could get these up to the correct head space. And it sounds like we are going to have a rather large thunderstorm coming over us right now. I think David is planning to go out with Madeline and play, but that's probably going to be put on hold. All right, they are all the correct head space. Let's get them wiped up and their lids on. The lids are on finger tight and they are ready to go in the canner. This is very fun. So you guys, I was getting ready to do like a massive clean of the kitchen, but I thought I would just show you my real life kitchen when I'm in the middle of a massive preservation day. Okay, you ready? All right, so yeah, just, there is just stuff everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere. The sink is full, the dishwasher is full, jars sitting around, towels, tomatoes, <laughs> the top of the crock pot, all of that all of the applesauce, like seriously, it's just a disaster. So I just, you know, want to show it like it is. Anyway, I'm going to get this cleaned up and uh, then we will get back at this tomorrow. All right, we are going to get the lid on. Locked in place. And make sure this is on a vent for now. And that is down. And then we just push this button here and it will start heating. And then as soon as it gets up to temperature, it does all its stuff on its own. It does the venting for 10 minutes. Um, you do have to come back and turn it to this um this guy right here to can pay no attention to the yowling cat it's him and madeline playing and he loves it he just doesn't sound like he loves it <laughs> he instigates it half the time anyway 
So um, yeah, so this basically does everything but having to turn this to can when it's ready to go. And then it starts the countdown for time. It does the getting it down from pressure, lets you know when it's ready to actually get taken out of the canner. So all very, very nice and helpful. And I don't have to babysit it. I actually have never done a stovetop pressure canner. I have one, mom gave me one, but then David got me this for Christmas. So I have been using that. Um, all right. I think that that is gonna be it for today. We are gonna let this guy boil down. Oh, wait, 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 no. I wanna run that through the food mill and then get it boiling down. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna take you through that process. It's not all that exciting, maybe a little bit. Um, and then I still have the couple of trays of tomatoes in the oven, but those also will need to go through the food mill and then cook down. So there's a lot of cooking down that has to happen. So we're probably gonna pick up most of this tomorrow, but that's fine. All right, let's, uh, we'll see you in a couple minutes when we're ready to do the next thing.